I'm going to talk about one of my other uh, Iranian students um, that uh, came to faith in Christ about two years ago. Uh, his story uh, uh, was quite interesting because uh, he reminds me of the um, the woman, this girl that was a fortune teller um, back in Acts chapter 16 when uh, Paul and Silas were in Philippi and they were sharing the gospel, there was this woman that says that she had the python spirit and uh, was following them around, crying out, saying, these men are the servants of the Most High God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. And then eventually uh, they commanded in the name of Jesus Christ for this demon to come out of her. And she had this fortune-telling type uh, spirit. Well, this uh, man that I was, uh, uh, was one of my students, uh, he was to be baptized, and uh, it just happened that our lesson uh, of that day was on folk Islam, and specifically how uh, the demonic world works in the Muslim world and, and keeps people in fear, and we talked about fortune tellers, we talked about um, some other uh, phenomenon that is prevalent in Pakistan and Turkey that I'm aware of, and as I was asking, I said, have you as a class experienced any of these things and then hands went up left and right about issues that they've dealt with. And uh, we talked about how in Jesus Christ, um, we are protected from these things at the same time we have the power um, in Jesus Christ to cast out demons. Something that people have to deal with over in this part of the world more than probably in the United States or in Europe. And uh, so providentially, uh, this man actually was not even planning on coming to these theological lessons. He had come here with his fiance, I mean to Yerevan, to uh, just enjoy the uh, Nuro's holiday. And he was invited to come to this uh, course that I'm teaching. So him and his girlfriend, his fiance decided to join. This is the last minute, so he joined. And during the, the course of the time, I looked back and I could always tell he was agitated. There was something just different about him. The questions he asked were just strange. When we were talking about amulets or objects of power, he still was very, very scared about this curse that was uh, written on a stone that was given to him and his family that made all these things go bad happen in his house. And so he brought that up. And I'm like, didn't you just hear my teaching on this subject? We talked about that, you know, uh, whoever curses you will be cursed if you're in Jesus Christ. Whoever blesses you will be blessed. I mean, that's what it says in Numbers 23, 23, Genesis chapter 1, uh, verses 1 through 3. And then that comes uh, full around in the teaching that it, it is the promised seed that we're in, in Galatians 3, that is Jesus Christ that's the fulfillment of those things. Anyway, so we had a lot of teaching on it, but he still hadn't gotten it. And uh, he comes up after class and says... Um, I have to tell you, uh, and he started explaining all these uh, issues that were going on with him and how he uh, can, this demon always talks to him and that his sister and him can still see demons in their house. And then we, uh, I was like, wow, this is not good. And I'm thinking this guy is the guy that's supposed to be baptized within an hour from now. And so as we begin to talk, he, he talks about, uh, I heard him say the word chakra. And then I was like, oh no, this guy has opened himself up through this thing called the third eye. It's this meditation things that Hindus do and other people that are yogis where they all of a sudden, if they, they, they're they basically inviting a, it's actually called a kundalini spirit, a, a, a python, a snake spirit that wraps around their spine and gives them insights and th powers and whatever. And I'm thinking, this is like X16, what this guy has done. And he said he invited this thing in and, and it came to be with him and attached itself to him since he was uh, younger. And it gave him insights about like, fortune telling and understanding about things and powers and all of this stuff, basically the stuff that we were teaching about. And, uh, and he said that when he became a Christian, things stopped except for about once a month, about uh, two times every month, this demon, he says, still talks to him saying, you, I, you know, you should want me back. You know, we, we had all these powers together and basically every, he just re continues to handle, he's demonized is basically what it was. And, and I said, well, have you ever asked God to deliver you from this thing? And he said, no, I've not. And then I asked, did you ever repent from calling this demon into you? 
and uh, confess the sin before God? And he said, no, I've never done that. And so I said, well, we need to do that right now. I said, look, I can pray for you, but it's you that has to want to, to, to confess to God openly that what you did in your, your in witchcraft and, and your, oh, you opened yourself to these demonic forces. And I said, then you have to repent and ask Jesus to deliver you, and he will. And he said, but I, I can't pray about this. I've never prayed out loud about this at any time in my life. I said, well, you have to. I said, you, you're about to be baptized. You need to repent and believe in Jesus Christ, then be baptized. That's what the scripture says. And so we prayed on him, laid hands on him, and I prayed for him because we first said, I want you to pray. And then he didn't pray. So I prayed for him and I was saying, God, give him strength open. Maybe like this demon just doesn't want him to pray. Whatever the thing was, I didn't understand. He prayed kind of a kind of a weak prayer. And then he kept shaking and shivering and about to fall over. I'm trying to hold on to him. And then we finally sat him down. We talked to him again, saying, you must confess your sin before God. He sat down and then he broke down crying before the Lord and just confessed his uh, his involvement in witchcraft, inviting this kundalini spirit, this, this python spirit into him. He repented and, and just poured out his heart before God. He said it's the first time he's ever confessed this sin. And we prayed for him, and then he stood up, and he said, do you believe that I'm delivered from this? And I said, yes, in Jesus' name, you are delivered from these things. Uh, that's what Jesus does for you. And then an hour later, he was baptized. And as we were talking about these things, it was just amazing how God's sovereignty brought up, like even the subject matter I was teaching that day. Um, I, I was actually kind of thinking, man, this is a weird subject. Maybe I shouldn't bring it up. I was talking about Genesis chapter 6 and the uh, connection with Jude and uh, different things that are kind of strange to talk about, especially in the Western world, not so much in this part of the world. But it, it was not only was that providential in my teaching, what was providential was the man coming here, he said, you're right, like I wasn't even planning on being here and God just brought this thing together and then, uh, then he was baptized, we baptized him, along with uh, six others. And uh, I just wanted to share that story because um, these things are real. And the Lord wants to deliver his children from any kind of uh, spirit, but we have to confess our sin and repent, and like this man did. And um, it was a, a great story. It was a great uh, testimony what God did and how he uh, delivered uh, this man from this spiritual being. But we have to pray for his sister. His, his sister has a familiar spirit where she continues to talk to on a regular basis and sees and hangs out with demons, which is normal over here. We had to deal with that issue in Turkey um, many times, uh, but uh, he's living, you know, he sees his sister all the time. And um, so pray for his sister, pray for his growth and in, uh, in Christ. And now it will be his uh, marriage as he's going to be uh, preparing to marry uh, another Muslim background believer, lovely woman that came to faith as well. So God bless. Thank you for being a part of this. Bye.